Welcome back to another episode of Super Kids. I'm Isaac and I'm so happy, I'm energized. Of course, a lot of things give you energy. Food, but also, check this nose out, yes, smells. Let me ask you a question, do you have a favorite smell? Uh, the scent of chocolate or maybe pizza? You know, I was walking here this morning and I was just inundated by smells. Oh, the smells of flowers, the smells of trees, the smells of spring. I'm so excited and energized because it's spring. And of course, I'm energized because I'm here with the super kids. Hey, you guys, hopefully you like spring. Hopefully you have a great day today. Welcome to all the great kids of San Yuk Elementary School. Welcome, guys. <laughs> a learning place for global leaders of the future. It's Seoul San Yuk Elementary School. At Samyuk Elementary, there is a special class that makes English fun and easy. The kids can play fun games and study at the same time. It's no wonder their English skills are improving so fast. Next up is the math class. Many kids find math to be a hard subject. There are so many numbers on the board, but here the kids even study math in English. See the look in their eyes? See how they are focused. Wow, these kids are amazing. It's time to play. But don't forget to stretch before working at the sweat. Okay, let's get rough. These kids will grow up to become smart and sensible leaders of the future. Dear my children, you've studied hard to advance to the world, to the future, to the heavens at the Seoul Sam Elementary School, real students are happy. I hope you do your best and get a good result and experience as you have tried so hard. You are the students of Seoul Sam Elementary School, Center of English Education. Please be super keys. Okay, put those boards down. I'll ask you to raise them pretty soon. These guys all have an opportunity to move forward. Well, 10 do. They're going to be asked questions on various topics, uh, geology, science, space, who knows what's going to come out, and hopefully you get the right answer. I'll ask you to raise the boards again and show us your answers, but we need somebody to ask great questions, so we have great Tommy. Thanks, Isaac. I'm Great Tommy, and I'm here to help you out. Unfortunately, only 10 people will make it in this round, but I wish you all the very best of luck. Now, the weather has been just fantastic these days, and I have been jogging every morning, keeping, you know, my, my fit, being fit and staying healthy. I hope all of y'all aren't just sitting at your desks 24-7 and just studying, because studying is important, but keeping healthy, you know, keeping your body fit is also very important too, okay? So I want you to take some time and, you know, exercise. Go enjoy the fresh air now and then. Okay, I'm pretty sure what you want to hear is the first question, okay? So listen carefully. Now this first question is about animals, okay? Hope you all like animals. Maybe your favorite one might be the answer. Listen carefully. The first question is about animals, and today is Leo, the lion's birthday. An elephant, a bat, and a snake came to the party. Which one is different from the others? Today is Leo the lion's birthday. An elephant, a bat, and a snake came to the party. Which one is different from the others? Which animal's different? Five, four, three, two, and one. Please raise your boards. Raise them high. Want to see your answers? I see various answers. I see snake and other answers too. Okay, let's see what the correct answer is. Snake is right. Keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Keep them up. Hmm, 
I wonder what kind of presents animals give each other on their birthdays. Well, anyways, here's the second question. It's a math question, and it's a good idea to take down some notes while I'm reading it, because you might forget the numbers, and numbers are very important math questions. So perk up your ears. If you sell a piece of candy for 201, you get to keep 51 in profit. To make 1,001, how many ones worth of candies do you have to sell? Okay, I'll repeat that. Remember, we want not the number of candies, but amount of money. You sell a piece of candy for 200 won. One piece of candy, 200 won. You get 50 won profit from each candy. So if you want to make 1,000 won, how many wands worth of candies do you have to sell? Not how many candies, but how many wands worth of candy do you need to sell? You want to make a thousand won, so you have to sell a certain amount to make a thousand won. How much do you have to sell? Not how many candies, how much money is worth? How much do you have to sell? to have a thousand won profit. Five, four, three, two, one. Please raise your boards. Keep them up, keep them high. And the answer is... Four thousand won. Young, my favorite movie was Little Mermaid. I loved all sorts of different types of animation movies. And I, but, you know, from all of those, I loved Little Mermaid. I always thought that mermaids were real. You know, for some of you that think mermaids are real, they could be in your imagination. But I'm guessing you know what this next question is about. It's about movies, okay? So think of all the movies that you know, because it might be the answer to this question. In Los Angeles, California, USA, there is a place that is famous for making movies, like Chungwuro is in Korea. What is the name of this place? Three, two, one. Yes, it's time to raise your boards. The answer is... Hollywood! Yes! A lot of Korean movies are winning lots of prizes at international festivals and there are still more to come and I can't wait to see great movies made in Korea. Alright, now this next question is about inventions. Have y'all ever invented anything, you know, at school for science projects or anything like that? I've invented a lot of stuff, maybe like, you know, two-sided pens, like one is black and one is red, but, you know, there's a lot of inventions like that. There's really nothing special about it but it was back in the days. Okay, well, I want you to listen to this question and hopefully you'll get it right. Okay. An American soldier, David Bushnell, saw a wooden wine barrel floating in water and invented this. It is a fighting ship that can go underwater in the ocean. What is it called? One under water. Please raise your words. Raise them high. Up, up, up. And the answer is... We all live in a yellow submarine. Yes, submarines, right? Keep them up, keep them up. submarine from a wine barrel floating on water? That's just amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, I should just, you know, pay attention to my surroundings, even those little things too. 
All right, it's finally the last question, and we will find out who the 10 people will be going on to the next round, okay? Now, this last question is a science question, so hope you know a lot about science. Okay, good luck. This is the sixth planet from the sun. It is the second largest planet in the solar system and has beautiful large rings. What is the name of this planet? Write your answer and hide your board. The sixth planet from the sun, second largest in the solar system. Beautiful, beautiful large rings. I want to marry it. Okay, what's the name of the planet? Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's see the boards. Raise them high. The answer is Saturn. It's Saturn. Yes. Just like the season, these energetic students of Samyuk Elementary School will be springing forward into the next round. You guys did a great job, and so did Tommy. Thanks, Tommy. You're welcome, Isaac, and congratulations to the four ladies and six gentlemen who are going on to the next round. I wish you the best of luck, and who knows who will become the super kid. Well, I'll see you in the next round again. Bye. Okay, guys, let's go. round, our mission is pretty simple. These 10 students from Samyuk Elementary School have a chance to move on. Five of them will. They have to answer two questions right. Now, our new panic attack is focusing on countries, on cultures. Anywhere you look in the world now, it's truly a melting pot. Here in Korea, other countries as well, so many cultures and peoples. The more we know about a culture and a people, the closer we get. So we're gonna get really close to a culture and a people from a certain country. Before we visited Vietnam and Thailand, let's see where we go today. The Philippines, located in northeast regions of Southeast Asia. It is made up with many islands with pristine nature which has made it a popular tourist destination. There are people of many different ethnic backgrounds living in the islands of the Philippines. So there are many unique and exciting festivals where you can witness the various traditions and customs that exist in the Philippines. The Filipinos are laid back and know how to enjoy life. They're friendly, fun-loving people, and getting to know them is a joy. Shall we find out more about the Philippines? I've been there a few times. It was always awesome. Gotta tell you, smiling is contagious. And not only is the place warm, but the people are warm. Fabulous experience. Now, to help us have a fabulous experience here today, we have a guide. That's right. Hi, Tommy. Hey, Isaac. Right now, I am wearing the Philippine traditional dress. Isn't it just so, like, cute? I think it's perfect for weather, you know, for weather like this. It's just, you know, the weather's so great. Wearing outfits like this would be perfect. But I'm pretty sure everyone doesn't really want to know about the outfit. What they really want to hear are the questions for this round. That's right. Well, you look awesome, and we do have some great questions. Here we go. First question on the Philippines. In the Philippines, people eat this every day with one or two main dishes. It is also the staple food in Korea. What is it? Number two, we'll get the mic to you. Hang on a second. What is your answer? Rice. That's right.
Wait a second. She already has a headband, so two headbands she can move on? No, no, she has to get two right. That's one headband, the right answer, rice. Okay, or indica. Let's hear the next question. Many people say that this city has the best harbor in the world. Since the harbor was built, it has become an important city with lots of international trade. Number 18, hang on a second. Oh, I'm sorry, number 17. Manila. Is that right? Very good! It also rhymes with the flavor of ice cream I like to eat. Vanilla. Manila. Okay, let's get to the next question. <laughs> this is the most cultivated tropical fruit in the world. It has a big seed in the center. Tourists love to buy this fruit after it is dried. What? Number two again. Let's see if she knows the answer. Mango. Is that right? Yeah, boom! Just like that, she moves on. Very good. Congratulations, number two. Congratulations, that's how it's done. One of the five spots is filled. I love tropical fruit. And my nose is telling me that we might have some in the studio. Wait a second. Tommy, do you happen to have any mangoes? That's right, Isaac. I actually do have some really delicious mangoes right here. If you see right here, this is the tropical, very popular fruit in Philippines. You know, it's very popular. Some people use it to make um, mango juice, you know, mango seasoning, stuff like that, just to make it on, like, put it icings on cakes and everything. Mango are actually one of my favorite fruits. Nice. You know, I heard that a multiplayer, someone who's really, really good at soccer, is also called a mango. I don't know if that's true. We'll have to double check. Anyway, delicious. Let's move on to some other tasty questions. What has something to do with the following words? Aklan Province White Sand Beach Marine Sports Number five. We'll get the mic to you. Boracay. He says Boracay. Bingo! Very good, Boracay. Amazing beaches. I hear only good things about it. I want to go. It's on the list. Maybe someday. Okay, good job. Let's hear the next question. This country ruled the Philippines for about 330 years and influenced... Back to back. Will number five get the answer? Spain. Yes, very good. Excellent job. Now, a lady and a gentleman. Three more spots to go. Spain's the right answer. Now, I believe our next question, you're gonna have to check out the video. Here it is, guys. This is the Embassy of the Republic of the Philippines in Korea. Today, the public relations officer from the embassy is going to give us the question. Hello, my name is Milo Fausto, the cultural officer of the Philippine Embassy. I am pleased to ask a question to the Super Kids children, and I'm also happy to introduce my country. So here is the question. This city is the oldest city of the Philippines. It is the center of political, commercial, and cultural activities in the central and southern parts of the Philippines. The nearest international airport to this city is called Mactan International Airport. What is the name of this city? Number 35. Your answer is? Cebu. Is that the right answer? Aha, uh -huh, it is. Excellent. A world-class destination for a lot of tourists. Again, a place I want to go. It's on the want-to-go list someday. Hey, uh, Tommy, did you bring something else to the studio? What's that? 
Yes, I actually did. You want to hear it just for a second? Yeah. Uh, uh. Okay, well, this isn't the actual instrument, but my friend just came back from Cebu and she gave me really cool stuff like this little instrument right here. And also she said, they uh, take romantic walks on the beach, and she also got this really cool necklace right here from the Philippines. Pretty cool, huh? It is very cool. And I think our students want to hear some very cool questions. Here's the next question. The Philippines was discovered in 1521 by a Portuguese explorer sent by Spain, along with... Number 35, going for her second one. Okay, if you get this one right, you're gonna go up there, okay? So, Magellan. The correct answer, Ferdinand Magellan. Excellent. That's the right explorer, Ferdinand Magellan. And now we have three spots filled, two to go. Here's the next question. This is a transport vehicle that is unique to the Philippines. It is not that big, but can carry about 10... Jifni? Uh -huh. Good job, and here's a little jeepney. When I went to the Philippines, I was amazed. So many colors and styles, and uh, definitely they, sh they have a flair for the design. Jeepney is the right answer. Okay, one more spot to go. Here's the next question. Vroom. In this traditional dance of the Philippines, the dancers have to step over for... Tinikling. One more time, please. Tinikling. Yeah! That's right. It's a very awesome dance. I actually did it once and got my legs stuck in the bamboo. I need a lot of practice there. Hey, Tommy, what is that you're holding in your hand? All right, the answer was tinikling, and that's the traditional dance in the Philippines. Now, in the tinikling dance, they use bamboo, you know, just to keep the rhythm, but you know, I brought a different instrument that is made out of bamboo and it is the traditional instrument in Philippines. Cool, can you play it? Yeah, sure, you wanna hear it? it? Sounds really awesome. Sounds like water. It does sound like water, doesn't it? And what's really peculiar is that it's called the Rainmaker. They actually use this in the South region, you know, just to help make cast spells so that it'll rain. Pretty cool, huh? Ah, uh, definitely. Nowadays, the world needs a lot of water, fresh water, and rain is very useful, like uh, rain drums. Kind of different culture, though. That's cool. You know, I have a wish. Um, maybe we could hear another question. This religion that spiritually unites the Philippines was brought to the country by Spanish people. Currently, over 80% of the Philippine population Yes, number 18. Roman Catholic. Yes. Catholicism is correct. Very good. Very good. So we have a couple headbands on the floor now. One spot left. Let's see what happens. Will this next question be the last? We shall see. Take a listen. Following the USA and England, the Philippines is the third country in the world to have the most number of speakers of this language. Number 28. Talago. We have number 16. English. English is right! Very good! That was the last question. Good answer. We've got girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, and they're all, hey, we have a girl on the floor who wants to show us some more stuff from the Philippines. Tommy, what do you have in your hands? 
Well, actually, right now, I'm carrying a miniature doll. It's called a caravan. It's a miniature doll of a caravan. And basically, a caravan is a merchant who used to go around riding on camels and selling goods. Now, in the Philippines, there are many merchants that carry their goods on carts pulled by animals, just like this little ox right here. And what's that merchant selling? Mm, he's selling, you know, stuff that he made from hand, like baskets. Wow. Definitely Filipinos pay so much attention to details. That's really awesome. Now can we finish this round, Tommy? Do you have anything else to show us? Nope, that's all for right now. So we'll just go on to the next round with the five winners who made it in this round. All right, good job to you. Thank you so much. And good job to our students who are moving on. Congratulations, let's go. the school champion of Samyuk Elementary School. That's our mission right now. So they've done a great job so far, our five powerful position holders. Uh, and if you'd like to meet them up close and personal, I think this is the time. Check them out. Very interesting, huh? Now they all have 100 points because they've done such a wonderful job so far. And they will add on to those points by getting questions right. 10 point, 20 point, and 30 point questions. The person with the most amount of points is the school champion and will have an opportunity to be a super kid. We'll see if we get one today, hope so. But let's see, of course, our board. <laughs> A lot of cool categories. Behind one of those categories is bonus. I don't know where it is. So when it appears, whoever gets that question right gets the bonus prize, which is pretty substantial. It's pretty big. You don't have to be the school champion. You have to get that question right. Now, each person here has a chance. If you use it, you can double the value of one of these 10, 20, or 30 point questions. Use it wisely. Looking at the board, I see a lot of cool topics. Global Friends has been very popular recently. Let's go to a 10-pointer in the category Equal. Look at the relation between the following words. Then, figure out what word should go in the blank. Muay Thai is to Thailand equals karate is to blank. Number five. Japan. Is that right? Yeah, young man. I have to ask you, I mean, I have to ask, are you good at Taekwondo? Yeah. Yeah, you okay? Bit, a little bit. A little bit. But I heard you like math a lot, right? Yeah. You enjoy math. And who's the person you really, really respect? Oh, uh, I like Gauss. Because? Oh, uh, because he's a uh, very popular mathematician. Okay, excellent. Well, choose a popular category, please. Uh, people. People. Okay, we're going to a 20-pointer. Here we go. March 24th, 1603 is the date of this person's death. Born between Henry VIII of the House of Tudor and his second wife, Anne Boleyn, she had a difficult childhood, but became the queen at the age of 25. Number 35. Elizabeth. Is that the right answer? Oh yeah, Elizabeth. Excellent. She helped England enter the golden age. Now, uh, Hee Jung, right? Yes. Hee Jung, I heard you like to play piano. Yes. And have you been playing for a while? Yes. How many years? Uh, for 
maybe eight years. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And you really love piano, huh? Yes. Cool. So please choose a category that you like. Who am I? Who am I? Back to the 10 points. Who am I? I have a big mouth. I drink a lot of water, but I don't eat any food. Moms use me more often than dads. My favorite meal is dirty clothes. Number five again. Washing machine. Yes, indeed, washing machine. Um, the first ten, I have a big mouth. I thought it might have been me. I drink a lot of water, but I love food, so it couldn't have been me. Yes, washing machine's correct, and uh, dads need to know how to use it, too. So, number five, please choose another category. Magic. You chose magic? Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to one of my friends, one of the best magicians in Korea, Kim jong Su. Hi, Super Kids. This is your magician, Kim jong Su, and welcome to the category Magic. Well, the weather in Korea is really getting warmer, and I'm really hot and thirsty, so let's start with a drink first. this can so let's put this away and oh you guys want to drink too uh, well hold on uh, there's a little problem because I only had one can so that's right look and concentrate Now, here is today's question. I just showed you a magic trick using this can. Now on this can, you can see this mark. You can also find these marks on paper boxes, milk cartons, and plastic bottles. This mark means that you can reuse. Number five is going for it. Recycle. Is that the right answer? Yes, it is! Recycle! Reuse! Tung, so that's awesome. You probably never have to go shopping. That's right. At home, I never run out of soda. So come to my place, let's party, and I'll be with Better Magic next week. Thanks once again. Let's give him applause. Yeah, Kim jong Su. Our mathematician, Young Min's in the lead. Please choose another category, Young Min. Uh, super Korea. Super Korea. We're going to wipe out all the 10 point questions. Let's go to Super Korea. Hello, Super Kids. Today, I'm at the Samsung Museum of Publishing. Here are some books on display. Children used to learn from these textbooks before. Ta da! Let's check out some printers. It's old and it's small. That's how books are made. The museum is full of books that were made long before I was even born. Now, are you ready for your question? In 1972, UNESCO held an exhibition called The History of Books at the National Library in Paris. There, they found Chikji Shimgyong 
a Buddhist scripture printed with the world's first movable metal type, made by a monk named Pek Wun. During which dynasty was Jikji Shimgyong made? Number 35. Kuryo. Yes, indeed! Yeah! Yes, indeed. Very good. Very good. You know, one of the reasons I love this show is because I'm always learning. And it says that the uh, Chikji uh, Xinjiang was made in 1377, third year of King Wu, his rule, and the Koryo dynasty was founded by uh, Taejo Wangon. Amazing. Flourished in the uh, peninsula for 470 years until the Chosun dynasty. That's a history lesson I'm learning. Okay, very good job, number 35. Tied in the first place. Choose again. Mm. Global Friends. Global Friends, one of my favorite categories for 20 points. Hello, Super Kids. My name is Clement, and I live in Dubai. Dubai is the most developed country in the United Arab Emirates. It is famous for the tallest building in the world and man-made island that resembles the world map. There is a lot of construction going on and the city is becoming better and better every day. So, as you can imagine, there are a lot of tourists who come to visit Dubai. I hope all of you in Korea can come and visit Dubai someday. Now, I have a question for you. Dubai is one of the seven Emirates that makes up the United Arab Emirates. Dubai, the name of Dubai, means this insect that has powerful back legs. What is this insect? Number five's going for it. Grasshopper. Is that the right answer? Yes, it is! <laughs> Grasshopper or Desert Locust. Thank you very much. That was awesome. We want to visit Dubai someday. I'm sure we'll do something on that country. Right now, though, all we have is a global friend. That was cool. Okay, continuing. Yes, number five. Please choose a category. Uh, computer. Computer for 20 points. Here's the computer question. The following abbreviations can be found on computer keyboards. What does ESC stand for? Number 17. Escape. Is that the right answer? Yeah! Sanghon! Very good. Sanghon, do you like playing computer games? Yes. Yes, and do you like food? Very much. Do you have a favorite food? Lasagna. Lasagna. Cool. Okay, well, choose a category that you like. Animation. Animation, the first 30-pointer. Anybody going to go up for it? No chances? Okay, 30 points. You are listening to the theme song of the Walt Disney Animation movie, Aladdin. As you may know, Aladdin was the son of a poor merchant, but became rich and found love after discovering a magic lamp. In which city did the story Aladdin take place? Number 35. Indonesia. Is that right? Number two. Number two. Uh, Egypt. No, you oh. gotta wait, 35. Do you want 17? India. No, number five and 16 have a chance, an opportunity. Gotta wait, number two. Five or 16, I'll give you three seconds. And then I'll give another hint. Three, two, one. Now, let me give you a hint. It's not a country, it's a city. They want to know the name of a city. So, this city, very famous. When you hear it, you're going to go, oh, yeah. Now, it was kind of the background, of course, for this movie, this animation. I can show you the world, Aladdin. I think it may have been the background also for Sinbad. Sinbad and his journeys, his adventures. 
Anybody know? Five seconds. The city, capital city of Iraq, where this took place is Baghdad. Baghdad. That's right. Okay, so who chose last? Number 17. Once again, your turn. Word. Word for 30 points. I ask you once again. Go for it, 16. Anybody else? Number 35 going to go for it, too? All right. Last chance. Let's hear the question. This word is used to call a pilot who has shot down five or more enemy planes. In tennis, number 35. Astronaut. Put down your chance. Number five. Air Force. Nope. 17. Soft. Do you want to hear the rest of the hint? Right now, 2 and 16, only you two have the opportunity. Everybody else must wait. Let's hear the rest of the hint. In tennis, it means winning a point from just the serve. In baseball, it means the best starting pitcher on a baseball team. It also means the best card in playing cards. What is this word? You hear the word a lot in baseball. Cards, tennis, a pilot, something that's very good. I'm going to give three seconds to the two did not have an opportunity. Then we'll give another hint. Number 16. Strike. No, chance goes down. Okay, in baseball that's appropriate, but not in tennis. Three seconds. Three. Two, one. I'll repeat it. This word refers to a pilot who shot down five enemy planes. Or it means in tennis. Serve, the person doesn't even get it. So we call that this word. You get a point. Great serve. Uh, in baseball, a pitcher. Korea has some great pitchers, some excellent pitchers. They call them this because they're so good. Also, in cards. Do you ever see a deck of cards? We should have Chongsu come out again here. There's the queen and the king and the jack and the... It's very good. Number five. Ace. Yeah! Ace! Very good. When you... Do excellent on a test, you ace a test. There are three questions left. A couple of people have to use their chance still. Still, pretty much anybody's game. Looking briefly at the scoreboard, number two, still got to get on the board. Number five, in the lead, 180, 1600, 17, 120, 35, 130. Like I said, two big questions left or 30 or 60 points, and a 20-pointer. Number five, what's your choice? Different. Different for 30 points. 17 going for it. Five's going for it. Good luck to everybody. Here's our question. Listen carefully to the following words and choose two that are different from the others. French, Dutch, Greek, Belgium, Spanish, Portuguese, Poland. Number 35. Greek and Poland. No. Nope. Number five. Poland. Oh. 16. Dutch and Poland. One more time, please. Dutch and Poland. 17. Belgium and Poland. Number 17, one more time, please. Belgium and Poland. Yes, indeed. Belgium and Poland. Excellent job. And just like that, 17. 
All the lasagna went to his brain, he got excited and tied it up right there. Two people in the lead, 180 points. Very good job. Two questions left. What's your choice? Organization. Organization for 20. Whoa, bonus question. That means Child U, which is providing us a big one year membership to their site. That's the prize. Anybody can get it. Doesn't matter if you're in the lead, what your points are. Anybody gets this. Good luck to all of you. Here's the organization question. This organization has its headquarters in New York, USA, and Geneva, Switzerland. It was created by the United Nations General Assembly in 1946 to help children after World War II and provide number 35. Greenpeace. Is it Greenpeace? Oh, no. 17? UNICEF. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, let's see. Yes, indeed, very good job. Here it is, the big prize. Congratulations. Okay, put that away. Not only do you get the prize, but you get 20 points added on to your total. So you are in the lead. We have one more category patterns. Number two, you're gonna put up your chance. Nothing to lose. Anybody else not use it? Everybody else use their chance, right? Okay. Patterns worth 60 to number two. Everybody else, 30. Look carefully at the following pattern of numbers. Number two? Eight. Is it eight? Oh, not eight. Please put your chance down. Seventeen. Seven. Is it seven? Yes, it is! Yes, it is! Wow. How did you figure that out? Did you figure it out? Yes. So how did you do that? Uh, <clears throat> uh, under, under left number plus, plus the top number plus the right number right. and uh, two times. Exactly. All the numbers on the corners multiply by two. That's the pattern. Very good. And because of that, and because you did such a great job, you're the school champion. Congratulations! <laughs> School champion Song Lin, one of the youngest students here in which grade? Four. Fourth grade, okay. Great use of the chance. Obviously that propelled you, gave you 60 points. You got a bonus prize as well. Feeling pretty good? Yes. And what would you like to eat right now? What's I your, want fa to your favorite eat, food? I want to eat homemade bread. Homemade bread, okay. Goes well with lasagna. Okay, so you know how this works? You're going to yes. go through some, a crossword puzzle. You've got to get as many letters as possible. Matching it with a master word, I'll give you some hints. Now, as you go through that crossword puzzle, if you don't know the word, don't get it via the hint, you can say pass three times. Every time you say pass, eats up five seconds from the clock. When you get through to the end, as I said, I'll give you two hints. After those two hints, you get 10 seconds to solve it. Think you can do it? Yes. Okay. He's got confidence. Let's see the three words connected to the crossword puzzles. We like to keep it random. The three letters. Z, H, and E. G. Z is your choice? Yes. All right. Good luck. Z. 
You can see tigers and elephants here. Ju. You fry food in this liquid. Oh. Pass. Ah, uh, oil. Red, yellow, blue are all called this. Color. Balloons and balls are this shape. Round. Storms bring rain and this. Cloud. Pass. A small folding case where you keep your money. Wallet. This is put around the farm to keep the animals inside. Ranch. Pass. An old story that may... Okay. Very good. Now you have the first letter and another letter too. Always the first letter helps in a big way. And you have that. It's a long word. You have the L and you have the O. Now I'm going to give you two other words connected to this master word. The first one is guide. Guide. Long word. Begins with an L. I'll give you one more. It is C. Now you have 10 seconds to tell me the answer. The answer is Lighthouse. Lighthouse, very good job. Sangun, our school champion, did he do good? Yeah. Yeah, did you guys have fun? Yeah. You want to come back? Yeah. You want to come back? Yes. Okay, so go home, get that homemade bread, maybe some lasagna, and uh, I guess we're going to say see you later. Thanks for joining. I'll see you again next time on Super Kids. Bye bye. Super Kids has some really great prizes to give away. A laptop computer for the Super Kid. A digital camera for the quiz champion. MP3 player for second to fifth place winners. And Child U online education one month membership for everyone on the show. This program is sponsored by Child U. Yes, it is! Also, the card. You ever see a deck of cards?